Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about progress bars and how you can achieve them in mCreator. The code for this video is provided in large part by Clyders. Let's start with the texture. I prefer to have all my HUD textures on the same PNG. However, if you prefer, you can make an individual sprite per texture. You need at least two separate textures, a default empty bar, and one that's filled in. However, you can have as many as you like if you'd like to have different colors at different fill levels. The placements of the sprite on your PNG will matter as we will reference those coordinates within the code, so keep in mind rearranging your textures at any point will require you to come back and update the code. Now go ahead and make your GUI or overlay. For now, all you need is the image or images you're going to be using for your progress bars. Make sure you set up the display conditions now as we will be locking the code. For the final bit of setup, you're also going to need a player persistent number variable, call it whatever you'd like. This is going to be tracking the progress bars fill level. This is what's going to allow us to control the fill via a procedure. Now let's begin with the code. If you're using one image with multiple bars like I am, you only need to call one resource location. Each instance in the second line you create will call that same resource location but at a different point. If you are using multiple different images, keep in mind you will need to call multiple different resource locations. Now please go to the description of the video and copy and paste in the code. Again, this code is for 1.16.5. If you're using a different version, just take these six variables and replace the first six variables that were here. Do this for both blitz. If using an overlay, you have another two uh, numbers at the end. This is going to be for the total size of this image, not for the image you're cutting out, the total size of the full image. So if you're replacing the code that was here, make sure you put those two numbers back the way they were. Now to explain what these variables actually mean. X and Y locations are going to be where on your screen you start to draw the image from, keeping in mind you draw it from the top left of the image. The main image position, X and Y, are going to be where on the image you start drawing it from. We'll get into what that means in a second. The image width and the image height is going to be the size of your bar. Let's take a look at the image in GIMP so I can show you exactly what that means. Now because of the way that Minecraft handles drawing images, they fill in top down and left to right. We're going to call this method 1. If you want them to fill in bottom up or right to left, we'll call this method 2. You have to invert the way things are done. In method 1, the default texture that will always be shown is the blank one, and you will fill in the filled in one on top of it. It will draw as it goes down. For method 2, the default texture is going to be the filled in one. For this method, we are going to take the empty one and draw it on top of it. So at 100% fill, we want to generate zero of this texture. At 0% fill level, we want to generate 100 of this texture. Keep in mind, when you generate it, you want this part to be generated ahead of time. So it'll always generate 18 pixels, and then you start counting the fill. So let's go ahead and get the positions. For the filled in position, because it's going to be the green bar, the X and Y main position are going to be 18 and 0, and the image size is going to be 17 by 75. For the second layer, the position is going to be 0 and 0, and the filled in is going to be 17 across, but 75 is going to be controlled by a variable. In the description of the video, you're also going to find a list of variables. These are just to make it easier for you to understand what's going on, and once you understand it, I very much encourage you to fill out the variables down here instead of having the integers up here. This will compress the code, and it'll look a lot neater. However, if you prefer to have it up here that's perfectly acceptable, it will work this way. Now I filled in the values as I showed you on the GIMP file, but for progress vertical, down here, for you it's going to say mod ID. You're going to want to fill in your mod's ID. Mine is called tutorial workspace. Fill that in here and here. And then this is going to be your progress bar. This is the variable I had you create earlier. Make sure that you have all of the capitalization in the exact same order, and now hit Control W. If you have everything set up right, it will go ahead and add this line here, but obviously with your workspace's name. If it doesn't do anything, that means you have an issue somewhere. Now, believe it or not, this is actually all you have to do for the code. The only other thing you'd want to change in here is the location that is drawn on the screen. I have a whole other video that shows exactly how that works, how to anchor it. There's no point in going over that twice. After this is set up, all you need to do now is make a procedure that is going to control this value. 
In the description of the video, you're going to find two PTPLs, one for the inverted value and one for the non-inverted value. For this explanation, I'm going to be going over the variables in the inverted value. To start off, we're going to go with the bar border. This is how many pixels down from the top you want to always be displayed. Meaning if the first 18 pixels are for the border, like I have here, you need an 18. Next is going to be the bar size. This is the part of the bar that's filled in, either green or gray or whatever it is. For me, that's 53 pixels in total. Next is going to be the fill level. This is the percent fill you're going to have. This is usually going to be another variable. And then the max fill level. This could be another variable, or it could just be a straight number. So if you have a bucket that holds 1,000 milliliters, but there's only 500 milliliters in it, this is where the 500 would go, this is where the 1,000 would go. And now max one here. You cannot have a negative number, and you can't have zero because you don't want to divide by zero. So max one. This is all you need to have an inverted bar. It has the same variables down here, just in different order. You can have this being run on player tick, which is how I have it, or you could have it be run on any other procedure as long as that's all you need to modify the values. Because my progress bar is going to be for energy and there's a lot of different things that affect energy, I want this running on player tick. Now this is what it's going to look like in game. As you can see, the bar is just over halfway filled. If I give myself hunger, it's going to go down. And if I eat my strawberries, it's going to go back up. Keeping in mind, because this is inverted, this is actually the default bar going down, not the green bar going up. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got it all working right. If you didn't, head to the comments or go over the MC Toolkit Discord. Special thanks to Clyders for showing me how to do this, and I hope you